Celebrity TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program. And we are going showdown. And this is a good one. This is like a legit battle. Like, this would have been what um, Mayweather. Uh, Pacquiao could have been Mott. This is two wines in their prime, you know, top condition, just matched up perfectly. We're talking about Saint Veron today, which is in South Burgundy, in between Beaujolais and Pouilly Fousse, um, AOC'd in 1971, made from 100% Chardonnay, great wines, really intriguing white Burgundy wines, Chardonnays that have, you know, a different style than what we see out of California, less oak, tend to be uh, a little bit more, you know, um, crisp, uh, a little more uh, minerality, and really just interesting wines. I, I think Chardonnays, as people get a wine education, tend to get a bad rap, and you know it's hard to get great value because White Berg's really 40 dollars $60, but St. Veron still rolls in at value, not value prices, but considering quality, well-priced wines. This wine's 28 bones, this wine's 22 bones, 90 points Josh Reynolds, love them, 91 points Alan Meadows, hottest wine critic in Burgundy over the last five to seven years. Um, Kermit Lynch is the importer of this. Stakehole out of Florida, this. I mean, this is like powerhouse stuff, Berger. Big name in uh, in the Mekong. Um, and uh, and uh, Robert Deneger uh, makes amazing, amazing wines. Um, 07, 07. Just want to confirm, got a little scared there for a second. Just really, really, really powerhouse matchup of two Chardonnays that I have nothing but high expectation for, and I'm excited. And if you want to learn more about St. Veron, I'm going to start doing this a little bit more as well. This could be a little fun. Uh, Mott, let's link up episode 541, where we go into St. Veron a little bit more. I could be doing a little bit more of this, Mott. You know, linking up prior episodes where people can get really into the subject matter. So, I'm about to get into these wines. Big shout out to uh, everybody who's been commenting, loving that feeling that, needing that, enjoying it. You ready for this contest? I'm ready. You know what, let's get another glass. Be right back. Ma, talk to them. Well, I don't really have much to say today. But I'm sure you got something. No, I don't. You're that quiet today? I'm that quiet. I'm, according to them, I'm the introvert, you're the extrovert. They're very, uh, that's a very, uh, that's not a big limb to yeah, You didn't have to jump out on a limb. Really fair. I'm gonna get two of the same glasses. Ma, follow me. Just go on a little tour. Oh, you got that other thing attached now. Oh, be careful. Uh, you know, I, I was gonna le leave you with Ma, but clearly he wasn't looking to entertain, so, you know, I, I guess what I did. Um, this place where there's glasses. Are you in the kitchen? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Just see what's going on today at the wine library. As you can see, these guys are just, you know, this big John K, Joanne, Danny. They're all a little tired. They did inventory. This is what they normally do anyway, though. Yeah, we don't K Murph. Do that. K is doing her thing. Hello. I'm very happy with that. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, these big boys are here. Ian's doing his thing. Look at Brandon. He looks very focused. Brandon, what do you got to say for yourself? Not a lot. <laughs> no reason to move tonight. <laughs> Good job, you were right. Now we got two glasses of the same. Let's go. I feel a lot better about this head to head because, you know, now same glasses, no excuses. Let's get back into what we do. thing I notice <clears throat> is the Verge uh, slightly darker. Mark, are you picking this up on the camera? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a pretty distinct difference. So you're getting a little bit more color 
out of the um, out of the Roger, and this is fun to kind of you know see uh, the wines head to head this way. I think this kind of makes it fun. So these head to head battles, I think having the same glass makes it a lot of fun. Let's um, let's start with the first wine, um, Robert Denager, uh Les Pomards Single Vineyard Via Beans Old Vines, uh, Saint Ferran, twenty eight U S dollars, ninety one points uh, Allen Meadows, and so we'll just do it this way. Uh, the Verger, uh, Terroir de Devet, uh, 2007, 90 points Josh Reynolds, 22 US dollars. Screw top for a very prominent French producer. That's a pretty interesting move, so I like that. Anyway, snippy snip, the Robert. Wow. Jeez, that was unbelievably delicious. This has an amazing, wow, this has, this is one of the five to 10 best noses of a wine that we've had on Wine Library TV history. This smells like gorgeous passion fruit. I'll tell you what it smells like, Mott. <clears throat> Do you remember the erasers from the 1980s? They were white and they'd put like action figures or, or He-Man on it or My Little Pony and you'd erase them. They had like a sweetness smell to them, the erasers that you almost wanted to bite them, they smelled so good. Um, that's what this smells like a little bit to me. Passion fruit, I get guava. Do you like this smell? Yes. It smells good, right? It right. smells like a Capri Sun. Mm. And Capri Suns are delicious. Um, very, very pretty nose. I would be baffled and stunned if the Verger can bring the thunder in the nose because I think the early rounds, this is so good, this would be one of those, I would even say flash knockdown by um, this amazing Saint Ferran. Um, I think the Demige might have a flash knockdown here in the first round. It's, it's so good. Um, let's sniff you sniff. It's pretty good too. I don't know if I'm in the, you know, is this the glasses? This is pretty good too. It's coming with a little bit more oak, so right off the bat, you, you know, I'm gonna like this a little bit more, but this is pretty serious too. Um, I don't know why these aromatics are hitting me so hard and so lovely. White flower. I get that similar racer thing that I got in the last wine. That white, I, I know a lot of you gonna leave it in the comments. I know you remember these, these white erasers. They were white, like white, white. And like, you know, they would have like, you know, just different pictures, Skeletor, Yoda, you know, you know, Cool in the Gang, <laughs> I don't know, Cool in the Gang, but you know, really nice nose, but not as vibrant and not as explosive and not as attractive, and this is more fruit driven, um, so early rounds definitely go um, to the Den and uh, Let's get into the palate, let's give it a whirl. Really good wine, good acidity, um, good, wow. Wow. This wine brings serious thunder. Um, <clears throat> this is very well made. Great acidity, I get this gorgeous apple flavor in the mid palate rounded out by small Asian pears on the back end finish. A little heat, room temperature white with higher alcohol. Most people won't taste that. I get this gorgeous fresh lemon lime juice. I feel like I <clears throat> almost went to like a Mexican restaurant, margaritas, lemon limes, just like this very fresh cilantro, just very fresh um, ocean minerality on this wine. I love it. Crushed up clamshells on the palate. Just beautiful minerality rocks. Um, I just greatness, a uh, little chalkiness on the back end. This is a spectacular Chardonnay that absolutely shows what this varietal can do in proper terroir and when it's not got too much makeup on it. I really like this wine quite a bit. This lemon lime zingy zing zang, zing zing, is delicious, I enjoy it. Uh, Allen Meadows is one tough SOB in scoring. He is quite conservative. So when I saw the 91 point score, I was like, wow. You know, really caught my attention. Um, I see why. I, I think this wine's got just enough creaminess on the back end to not make it Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and it's got great complexity. And literally, literally, all I can think about right now is man oh man, do I wish I had a great piece of fish in front of me right now. You know, charred, nothing else. Just on the grill, just give it to me. I'll suck the eye out. I don't care, don't touch it. I will, you know, get rid of the, you know, the uh, bones. 
because I want it fresh and clean, right of the ocean, with a bottle of this, you know, you'll never hear me say this. I want to be fishing on a hot day, pulling it out, throwing it right on the grill, and having this nice and cold. It's that quenching of a wine, and really one of the most interesting white wines from the Chardonnay grape varietal that I've had in a long time. Kudos, kudos to Robert Denigent. Um This is an amazing effort. Um, I'm gonna score it 93 plus points. Love it. You know what, I'm gonna score 94 plus points. I'm not gonna be bashful. There's just no reason. No reason for bashfulness. You find me bashful? No. 94 plus points. All right, Verge. I'm just thinking like Team Verge, the people out there not wearing the Team Verge t-shirts, they're just like, oh crap. Yeah, it's gonna take all that in a bag of chips to win this match. Let's give it a sniffy sniff, one more time. It's starting to open up even more with it's a little bit of like a nutmeggy almond kind of thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. Too bad, it's a good wine too. We're in a little bit of a run here. <clears throat> yeah, Core episode did well. And this, um, this did as well. Now this is a nice, very nice bottle of Chardonnay. A little more oak, which is great. I even felt that. You know, this one could have gotten to 96, 97% score range if it just had a little bit more. But this is, you know, a little more textbook solid, right? I think Josh Reynolds <clears throat> does a great job. He goes 90 points on this. This is probably where it's gonna end up on for me. I'm just gonna taste a little more. There's no denying this common kind of almond paste meets lemon juice thing going on which I think is quite good. And actually, there it is, a little marzipan action, which I think is quite interesting. But there's a little plasticness that comes along with that marzipan-y thing, which I think you know could turn off some palates. Medium to full-bodied, nice bottle of Chardonnay, definitely can hold its own with most Chardonnay conversations, but when you bring it in with a beast of a wine like this, it does get overshadowed. But I wanna keep it within itself. I don't wanna kind of mess it up. I'm gonna still score at 90 points. I think it's very, very good. And at 22 bones for Chardonnay, not a lot of things get me that exciting. Uh, excited, excuse me. Um, but all in all, you know, it's got some of that white flour, which I like so much. A little bit of like, almost like a white pepper. There's like this little kind of interesting spiciness on the mid palate. It has a lot of intriguing flavors besides this little charred oak, little burnt stick. I just feel like I, I went camping and um, had marshmallows. On a, on a stick, you know when you do that mott, sometimes like the stick will still have some marshmallow residue, nobody's looking, you kind of give it a little bite, so you get a little of that sweetness, but you also get a little bit of that char, and the stick, the wood, and that's kind of the flavor I get here. This is really like a uh, marshmallow uh, stick uh, from a camp fire when you're a Boy Scout, and so I like it, and it's a 90 point wine, and I would recommend it, but it got its butt beat in by just a better, you know, you know, I don't want to use, I was, I, there's a good analogy that I'm not gonna use because it would hurt my feelings, but that's exactly what just happened here. And so, um, yeah, that's for you, Dominus. And so, I think that uh, this is a very intriguing episode. I hope it opens your mind to St. Veron in general. I hope you do click episode 541 where we go a little bit more into the, the, to the wines. Um, and most of all, uh, I think that once again, it proves that A, Kermit Lynch is an amazing importer for finding this producer, and B, there's value out there and you know, it's tough for me to say 28 and 22 is value, I get it, but it's value compared to plenty of the $40 Ramey and Hyde Vineyard Chardonnays from California, the same old stuff, the Lewin, you know, that didn't bring it from Australia, some of these pedigree wines, some of even these Pellini Montrachets, Chasson Montrachets, you know, same old stuff. These are really great wines. I think St. Veron is vastly underrated, but please don't just go out and buy Louis Jadot or Louis Latour because you're gonna get that standard commodity supermarket brands. Go and try to find some of these smaller producers because that's where the thunder is. Question of the day. Question of the day. What is the last thing that you did that brought thunder? You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.